Alright, so by now you have probably heard that both Harry Potter and Twilight are being remade not long after they were already adapted, uh, and they're being remade specifically into television shows. This is a pretty dumb decision for a lot of reasons. For starters, it hasn't been that long since these came out. You know, they were really popular book series during the 2000s and even the early 2010s, and then they got made into really popular movie series around the same time. Like, the last Harry Potter movie only came out in 2011, and the last Twilight movie was uh, 2012, I believe. So, it hasn't been that long. You know, most of us can at least remember when those came out. Now, with Harry Potter, you can maybe justify that a little bit by mentioning that the books left out, or that the movies left out a bunch of stuff from the books, you know? Like, for example, Peeves the Poltergeist was a major side character in, uh, in the books, but he just never showed up in the movies. I, I believe they filmed a bunch of stuff for him in the first one, but they just decided to cut that out and then just never put him back in. Uh, so, you know, there is stuff they could explore, like character stuff and stuff with the lore and everything. So that, there is an argument to be made there, at least. But what is the argument with Twilight? You know, the books had so much crap in there that was just nothing. You know, it describes every moment of every character's life in explicit detail, which is really, really annoying to read. If you've never read the books, trust me, there are so many parts where it's just Edward and Bella staring at each other and Bella describing Edward's perfect face. And the movies brought all of that in, along with some of the almost kind of exciting bits. Hell, the movies are a lot better and more fun than the books were just because of the hokey acting and some weird directorial decisions and some weird special effects and just like stuff like that that just wasn't in the book, you know? Like it, it's they're bad, but they're enjoyably bad for the most part. The only thing I can think of that they could expand on in a television show because remember, television shows are way longer than books or excuse me, way, way longer than movies. Like a movie is usually two, maybe two and a half hours, but three hours and above is very, very rare and just it doesn't happen a lot for very good reason. Whereas television shows, one season could easily be eight to ten episodes that are one hour each. Like there's just a lot more time to fill. And the only way I can think of Twilight filling some of that time beyond just, you know, Edward and Bella staring at each other, throwing in a bunch more useless show original subplots, uh, would be to maybe expand on the lore a little. Like, you know, the vampire society and how it came about and like the Volturi specifically, because they essentially rule over all the vampires as tyrants, and it'd be neat if we got to see their backstory and how exactly they came to power. Like, that could be kind of cool, but I don't think it would be worth making an entire show over. But in honor of literally everything that gets put on TV or in theaters nowadays, needing to have a pre-existing audience, I'm just bringing up some other books and stuff that I feel could be adapted into TV shows. Specifically into TV shows, remember, because like I said, TVs, TV and movies are very different from one another. Like, movies are not only shorter, but they are designed to, even if it's a series of movies, like if it's three that adapt a trilogy of books or something, that is like three really big chunks, bam, bam, bam. So the pacing is different than like a 10 episode television show, which is three seasons long, or excuse me, three seasons of 10 episodes of TV each, God, I can't talk, uh, which is a bunch of smaller chunks. You know, every episode needs to have its own beginning, middle, and end. Every movie needs to have its own beginning, middle, end. Every season needs to have its own beginning, middle, end. You know, it's about pacing, but also about like how much content there is, you know? So I'm, I'm choosing stuff that I believe not only has enough stuff to fill an entire uh, couple seasons of TV without adding in a whole bunch of new subplots and show original characters and stuff, but also stuff that I feel the pacing and the structure of the story would work well in that format. Some of these will be books and stuff that have already been adapted, but they weren't adapted very well and I feel they deserve another chance. Like the first thing on this list will be World War Z, an oral history of the zombie war. Now, this book is amazing. It's genuinely one of the best I've ever read. If you haven't read World War Z, check it out. It's fantastic. It's basically, uh, it takes place years after there was this massive conflict between humans and zombies where humanity was nearly wiped out, our civilization crumbled, and then we came back and we restored everything and zombies are still around, but humanity is in control again. It's not really a story about one character or one hero or even a group of them. It's a story about the entire world and all of humanity, 
which is why the movie version just didn't work that well. You know, it's about Brad Pitt being a hero and stopping the zombies and everything. And granted, the movie is so different that it may it may as well just be a totally different thing. Like, if you look at it not as an adaptation and as its own thing, it's an okay movie. I don't, like, I don't hate it, <laughs> but it's still not, it, it's not great, and it does not reflect the book, which is actually a series of interviews from people all over the world who participated in uh, the, the war in very, very different ways. You know, it's kind of similar to The Good War, except that was about World War II, and it's just, it's a very personal look at some of these things while also being a very uh, big, good look at all of this stuff. And you just couldn't do that in a movie, but you could do it in a television show. You, know, you could film it almost like it's supposed to be a documentary or something. And you could have, you know, it'd be these interviews, each of which could be one episode or maybe half an episode or something. And it's just telling their story. And then as they're narrating, you f show footage, which depicts what they're talking about, you know? You can do a lot of interesting stuff with this. Next up is Kill or Be Killed, which I have uh, right here. This one's actually a comic series. I talked about it very early on in the life of my channel. And actually, I talked about a lot of these books before. If you want to know which ones I have and haven't talked about, there's a search function on YouTube, guys. Like, there's no need to leave a, a comment saying, hey, will you ever review that? Like, I probably already have, dude. <laughs> Just search for it. It'd be quicker than leaving a comment. Jeez. But anyways, uh, Kill or Be Killed. This is a really interesting story. It's about a guy named Dylan who uh, attempts suicide, but he lives. And it, it turns out he lives because a demon came along and saved his life. And the demon tells him, okay, from now on you have to kill one person every month. Otherwise, I will take your soul. And so Dylan really doesn't want to do it at first, but he... He kind of has to, both out of self-preservation and because he decides he's going to start killing people who he feels deserves it. You know, so like criminals, pedophiles, stuff like that. It's a very interesting, thought-provoking story because, I mean, there's stuff like, okay, is the demon even real or is Dylan crazy? Uh, there's a lot of talk about, like, exactly how somebody gets to the point that they would be willing to commit suicide. And there's a lot of questions about, like, okay, is it even okay to kill people like this? Is he just trying to justify it to himself? Is he just doing this out of self-preservation? Is he just doing this to try and give his life some sort of purpose? You know, there's a lot of interesting stuff there. And I think it could be really well explored in a live-action format. However, it does fall into this weird middle ground where there's too much there for a movie, but there's not really enough for a television show. Because you can see... This is just the first volume I have here. It's not that thick, and uh, there's only four of them. Uh, and there's just way too much to cover in two and a half, even three hours. Uh, you could maybe do it in like a 10 or 12 episode miniseries, but the thing is, the way television works a lot of the time, that, that's just not going to happen because it's designed, shows are designed to go on as long as possible, which is a real shame because we've had a lot of shows that have been good for a while and have reached a natural conclusion or a point which could have been a natural conclusion if they just changed a couple of things but the producers wouldn't let them because it still had an audience and so it just goes on and on forever and it rots away until everything we originally loved about it is gone and then it just fades away with a whimper instead of going out with a bang and being beloved you know like supernatural had like 30 seasons for that reason guys i got a little off topic there for a second but anyways kill or be killed also would not require a huge budget you know, most of the action and stuff is just like regular gunfights and explosions, so you wouldn't need to do too much crazy stuff with that. Uh, and hell, even the demon w would be the only part where they would require crazy special effects or anything, but if you wanted to be cheap with it, you could have the demon take the form of a person with red eyes who like walks through walls or something, you know. It's not like adaptations haven't done stuff like that. But anyways, Kill or Be Killed, great story, and I feel more people should be exposed to it. Then we have Broken Empire, aka The Prince of Thorns. This series is a lot of fun. It's not perfect, but I did really, really enjoy it. Like, it's about this guy named Jorg Ancrath, who is a nobleman, and his mother and brother are both murdered one night while he's a child, but he manages to escape. And then, by the time he's 14, he becomes the leader of a gang of really brutal bandits, and he has also decided he is going to leverage this and become the emperor of, as they call it, the Broken Empire, because it hasn't had one single leader for a long time. It's been a bunch of squabbling kingdoms that all 
really, really hate each other, and they're all trying to, the leaders of all of them are all trying to become emperor themselves. And it's just a story about his journey to do that. Now, this story takes place over the course of many years, and I think that the, the way the flashbacks are structured, especially in the second and third book, would work better on television, because on television we're used to jumping back and forth between different storylines all the time. Like, hell, Lost, the entire show was jumping back and forth between the present and flashbacks, and it was it was a pretty good show. Uh, but in the second and third books, it was weird because, like, you had this one long uh, flashback storyline, which went through both books, so there's not really a climax for it in book two, and there's not really a beginning for it in book three. Uh, but then you also have the present mixed in there, and due to stuff that happens in the present, we already know about some stuff that happens in the past, so it's not really surprising when it happens. It's, it, it's weird, and I can't say I'm the biggest fan of it, but I think that that structure would work a little bit better on TV, and plus we could do more stuff like exploring Jorg's history as a bandit, and maybe spending some more time with other characters to give them a little bit more personality, and explore just more about what makes them tick, you know? And, I don't know, it's just, it's a good low fantasy series, there's a lot of those coming out now, or there's a lot of low fantasy coming out, there's not a lot of good low fantasy coming out. And just, you know, Prince of Thorns, I, I want to see that on the screen. The Stormlight Archive. Now, I should clarify, we shouldn't adapt the Stormlight Archive anytime soon. We should wait until it's at least seven or eight books along, that way it doesn't catch up and the show doesn't uh, go beyond where the books are, because that can sometimes work, it sometimes doesn't, whatever. The point is, wait a while, and the Stormlight Archive, I can't even describe the plot to you really, it's just a whole bunch of different characters doing a whole bunch of different stuff in this really big, really complex world, and I just want to see that brought to life on screen. You know, eight to ten episodes per season gives you plenty of time to adapt all the books, which are stupidly long. They're like this thick, by the way. They're, they are stupidly long, if you're not aware. Uh, and just, you know, I want to see the journey of Kaladin and Shallan and Adolin and everybody else. You know, I, I want to see that, and having each of them get, like, a season focused on them or a couple episodes focused on them would be a great way to handle it. Cirque de Freak, a.k.a. the Saga of Darren Shan, a.k.a. The Vampire's Assistant. Now, they did make a movie of this a long time ago, and that was, like, the first three books, maybe, with elements from the rest of the series. Like, it, it didn't follow the story that closely. It was not a terrible movie, but it just wasn't really Cirque de Freak. It's about this kid named Darren Shan, which is also the name of the author, and there is an actual explanation given for that in the last book, which is really, really interesting, so I'm not gonna give it away here, but it's... It's very, very neat. And it's about him. He winds up getting turned into a half-vampire, uh, and he becomes an assistant to a full-on vampire, and he has to fake his death and leave home. And then the rest of the series is about the adventures he has... Adventures? Uh, the situations he gets into, let's say, uh, as a half-vampire, and how the vampires themselves are this weird, like, secret society that are at war with another secret society called the Vampanese. It's... It's a really different series, you know, that's part of why I liked it as a kid, is that there was a lot of vampire stuff coming out at that time, thank you Twilight, uh, but this was something that was focusing on vampires, but it did them in a unique way. But there is just way too much to cover in a movie, or even a series of movies, uh, like just the fact that they had Darren's friend <laughs> Josh Hutcherson, I know his name, is the character's name is Steve, but I'm just calling him Josh Hutcherson, uh, the fact that they had him come back and be the villain in the first frickin' movie, when in the books he was not there until way, way later, and it was actually a really big deal and handled extremely well, not just because it was a more surprising twist that he came back so much later, but because it, it just made more sense that the characters would have changed that much and there would have become such different people. You know, it just, it worked a lot better that way. Being able to expand on this in TV show format and make it, like, I don't know, six or seven seasons long, we could watch Darren age, but age very slowly while the rest of the world around him changes much quicker, because this takes place over the course of like 20 years. You know, he's he's uh, just a kid or a teenager when it first starts, and by the end he's like a 35-year-old man. <laughs> like, it, it's easy to forget that, but yeah, he he's pretty old. It takes place over a long period of time. We would have a lot more time to properly explore vampire society and their conflict with the Vampanese, and hell, we could probably even bring in uh, elements from the prequel series, which was uh, the 
the Saga of Larton Crepsley, I believe it was called. Uh, but that's just all about, you know, another character's backstory. It's, it's, it's really interesting, you know? It, we could do a lot with a Cirque du Freak series. And then there's The Demonada, which was also written by Darren Shan. And I've mentioned before, this is my favorite book series of all time. Now, specifically, I would want The Demonada to be a, an animated series, because there's just a lot of stuff in here that I don't think you could do justice with in live action. You know, it's, it's kind of like Invincible, you know, like, you could do that as live action, but there's just so much crazy stuff in there that it, it's just easier to do in animation, and it probably works better in animation. And Demonada is similar, like, just the over-the-top crazy violence and stuff in there, and some of the weird demon designs and everything, like, I, I just think animation would bring that to life better. That's just me, though. I'm not super picky about this. But that's one. Uh, how do I describe the plot? The short version is that there are a bunch of demons led by demonata, which are, you know, very powerful ones, like demon lords, basically. Uh, and they are trying to destroy all life in the universe as the characters fight to stop them. And similarly to Cirque de Freak, the first couple books in this are all kind of like self-contained little stories, which all... Uh, basically just introduce it, stuff that becomes important later and it's really the second half of the series where shit hits the fan and the main story and main conflict comes into play and um, this also takes place over a very long period of time like 1500 years is it, it's a long long time uh, and you couldn't really in a movie cut back and forth between characters that easily but on TV again people are experienced with that and they kind of expect it so you could probably uh, if you did it right, introduce all three of the main characters in the first season, maybe the first two seasons, and then bring it all together and have the story go on like that. I just want to be able to introduce other people to the Demonata, you know? And in fact, that's, that's my reasoning for a lot of entries on this list. I just want to be able to introduce other people to it. I want it to become more mainstream and have more people really experience what's going on, you know? Just stuff like that. And anyways, next up is Lightbringer. Now, this series started off great. It completely fell apart by the end and honestly part of the reason I want an adaptation is just to change the ending and try and do it better because I what was even going on at the end there man I don't know but again this is a series that cuts back and forth between multiple different storylines that's easier to do on TV than in movies uh, but there's also like a really interesting magic system there's some great battle sequences which I'd love to see in live action you know like, the battle at the end of the first book, I would really like to see that done uh, justice, you know? Like, uh, Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings-style big battle like that. I, I would like to see that, but I don't know. There's just a lot of stuff in here which would make it work for TV. It's an interesting world, but it's not too weird and crazy, so I think mainstream audiences could get into it. And, well, it's not low fantasy, but it does have enough in common with our world that's... You know, there's just... It wouldn't be too hard to get into. Next up is Hush Hush, and this one is just one of the many clones of Twilight that came out when that series was at its peak, you know, just teenage girl falls in love with some sort of supernatural boy, and then adventure ensues, except it, instead of adventure, it's usually just a whole bunch of drama and fighting because these authors weren't very good at what they did. And Hush Hush, at this, just fuck it, man. <laughs> like, that's my, that's my reasoning for Hush Hush, you know? Like, this is basically the same story as Twilight, except it's with angels and fallen angels instead of vampires. I know this series has a lot of detractors, but I thought it was fine when I read it. And again, when you're adapting it, you could change a couple of things and make it better. But you have more to work with than you did with Twilight because, well, for starters, the main character, Nora Gray, has a personality, unlike Bella Swan. And... I mean, other than that, there's not a whole lot else here that is amazing you could work with, but that's better, you know? You could do something with that. And I mean, if you're already remaking Twilight, just make something else that goes for the same audience, you know? Like, you, you could get some eyeballs on this. Maybe not as many as Twilight, because that is already super well-known, everyone knows it, but at the same time, we already have Twilight, and we can watch that anytime we want, why would we watch it again, you know? And at the, at the very least, Hush Hush is not about vampires, and you know what, just take all my thoughts here for Hush Hush and just throw that at every other paranormal YA romance that came out around that time, because there were a lot of them, and fuck it, make, make one of those into a TV show. Just fuck it, just do it. My battery died and it took me forever to get back here, but that's not important. Next up is Animorphs. This is a children's series, which really, 
had some extremely dark stuff considering it was for children. It's all about these alien parasites called Yurks that are slowly taking over Earth and infiltrating, and they want to enslave all of humanity, and then these five kids uh, wind up running into a different friendly alien who gives them the power to turn into animals, and for most of the rest of the series, they are just fighting a guerrilla war against the Yurks while waiting for help to show up. And it, the series does not stray away from the fact that they are actual child soldiers who are in a situation they don't want to be in. And I know that Animorphs already got a television show adaptation a long time ago, but that was a kid's show on Nickelodeon, and so they couldn't really show all the stuff that made it uh, as good as it was, that made the books as good as they were. Like, they couldn't show all the violence, they couldn't do proper body horror with the effects budget they had, which is why I would prefer this be an animation as well, but I'm not... I, I don't know, I just... I would prefer animation in this case, but uh, they couldn't do all the proper body horror, they couldn't show all the psychological trauma these kids were going through, it's just stuff like that. And this series is uh, really long, and, but it also has a lot of diversions, you know, a lot of like smaller subplots and books that are kind of just one-off adventures. Uh, again, I I keep saying adventures, but I really shouldn't in uh, most of this con most of these contexts. But anyways, they go off on these little misadventures. These events happen, let's say, uh, which don't contribute much to the overall story. However, the word filler is greatly overused these days because the stuff that the Animorphs get up to here it expands on the lore. It expands on the characters. It uh, shows them getting slowly better at being these guerrilla fighters, and it shows them learning to control their powers better, and stuff like that. It is still contributing a lot to the overall story, even if the main plot isn't moving forward quite as much, or at all, in some cases. But pe again, people just overuse the word filler and use it to mean, oh, there's 30 seconds where the main story is not being progressed in some way. This is filler. It's not filler, you idiot. Your brain has been melted, you have no attention span anymore, stop watching TikTok. Next, Artemis Fowl. Again, they already made a movie of this, but it was terrible. And it's basically about this uh, child genius who finds out fairies are real, and they have their whole own civilization underground, and he steals their gold in the first book, and then the later books are about various other trouble he has with them. <laughs> you know, things like that. And the books are very episodic, is the thing, so doing them as a movie where you're also sequel baiting really hard, th that was just one of the problems with it, was that they were sequel baiting going, look, Opal Cowboy, she'll be, she'll be back next time. It, it, it wouldn't really work. So I think a television show uh, where you have a bunch of arcs that are mostly self-contained and maybe split it up by season or something, that would be a lot better because that would be a lot closer to the books and it would give you plenty of time to explore the characters and explore the weird aspects of this fairy world, because there are a lot. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. This one's very simple. It's about a kid named Greg Hefley who is writing a diary with weird illustrations, and it's just all the weird crap he gets up to in his life. And they did make movies of these, and they're fine kids' movies, but they never really captured the spirit of the books, and they were never as funny as the books, because the thing is, in the books, Greg is an asshole. He's a straight-up sociopath. There's actually a famous video on YouTube uh, called Greg Hefley is a Sociopath, or something like that, which goes over a lot of the uh, examples of what makes him such an awful person. And the thing is, that's a big part of the humor, because he does awful things, and then awful things happen to him, and it's really funny when awful things happen to him. Like, we, we can't laugh at him when he's uh, made to be a more sympathetic character, and the things he does aren't as bad. You know, we have to... We have to dislike him at least a little bit for this dark humor to really land. So a TV show which just admits Greg is an asshole, and it doesn't have to be necessarily aimed at adults, you know, it can still be a family show, which everyone can watch and enjoy. It doesn't have to be for little kids or for adults, it can be for everybody. Uh, it could still show him doing terrible things and then having terrible things happen to him in turn so we can laugh at his misfortune, and it could still be a pretty good morality tale for li little young kids watching it. And it could be, you know, half-hour episodes where he does terrible things one right after another, and it doesn't really have to lead into any grander story because Diary of, Diary of a Wimpy Kid doesn't have one, and it's still really funny in spite of that. The Darth Bane Trilogy. Now, this is not a completely original series. It's, you know, in the Star Wars Expanded Universe, which is 
no longer canon, but I still would like to see Disney do something with it, because the Darth Bane books, they're about a guy who, again, is named Darth Bane, uh, who lived around a thousand years before the events of the movies, and he was a Sith Lord who created the Rule of Two. You know, he's the one who killed off most of the other Sith, and then decided, okay, we're just going to have one master, one apprentice, and they went through the generations like that until Sheev Palpatine eventually came out and took over the entire galaxy, and it, it, his plan worked out great. And he has a fascinating life story. Uh, like, if you haven't read the Darth Bane trilogy, check him out. He has a fascinating life story, which I would like to see explored in some form, you know? It doesn't have to be gigantic uh, movies with all the, I don't know, $200 million budgets or whatever Rise of Skywalker and all the others had. Uh, it can just be exploring this part of the lore from a long time ago, which explores a lot more of the galaxy than pretty much anything else that Disney has put out, or hell, even the other mainstream stuff like Clone Wars has put out, but it explores and expands on the lore in really interesting ways, and it's not just focused on the frickin' Skywalker family, or like 12 other people, because that's the thing, people who are into Star Wars are just so insistent on demanding nothing but nostalgia and fan service constantly that all we get in all these movies and shows that are coming out and oversaturating Star Wars, all we're getting is focus on like 12 characters and watching them do stuff. And sometimes it's kind of cool, but sometimes it's not. I haven't watched Andor yet, and I refuse to, because you people keep saying it's great, but you also said The Mandalorian was great, and that show is shit, so whatever. The point is, I, I want a Darth Bane show made. <laughs> the Ranger's Apprentice. This is a series all about this kid named Will, who lives in the kingdom of Arlen, and he becomes a ranger, who are basically a combination of spies and scouts that work for the king. And it's similar to Artemis Fowl, where it's pretty episodic. Each book has its own conflict, and they don't really tie into anything bigger. Uh, and it's just his journey to become a ranger, and then in the later books, which are years after the beginning, uh, he is a full-fledged ranger, and it's him and his friends dealing with other threats to the kingdom of Arlen. And you know what? It's great. Again, it's episodic, it's low fantasy, so it wouldn't require a massive budget, and, you know, if it gets cancelled in between seasons, it's not gonna be as big a deal, because we're not gonna just have this one story, which we'll never get a conclusion to. We have these smaller ones, and even if we don't get more of them, at least it ends in a satisfying way. And on top of that, we'll get to watch Will grow and become better over the years and over time. I think that just, that just sounds great. You know, I, and I know people don't like uh, changing actors <laughs> to show them getting older or anything, but I mean, it worked okay in House of the Dragon, you know, so whatever. But Ranger's Apprentice, don't have a whole lot else to say. I think that would just be great in a TV show format. Next up is Angel Fall. Now, I read these books not that long ago, and they are deeply flawed, but the beginning, at the very least, is freaking incredible. Like, uh, it's about angels, like biblical angels, led by the Archangel Michael, coming down to Earth and then just destroying everything. Like, I don't know if they're trying to wipe humanity out necessarily. In fact, part of the reason that these books aren't great at the end is that they don't really go into detail about what exactly the angels were doing, but whatever. They come down and they just destroy civilization and it's a post-apocalyptic wasteland and uh, just a couple of weeks after that uh, we meet a main character girl who her sister gets kidnapped by angels, and she also winds up teaming up with another angel who is at odds with the rest of them for some reason she's not sure of, and they team up together to go rescue her sister, and then the plot unfolds from there. And again, it's really great at the beginning, but similar to Lightbringer, I want to do this partially just so we can change the ending, uh, or at least expand on it more so it doesn't uh, suck as much, you know, because, like, there's so many hints at deeper parts of the lore, which would help make the story and everything make more sense, but they don't really go into the necessary detail for it. So I think having a show could expand on that in interesting ways and show us really what we're looking for and make the ending make more sense. The Falcon Cannot Hear, which is technically not a published book, I don't think. It was a timeline on alternatehistory.com, but it has been collected into PDFs and stuff, and whatever. The point is, I want it adapted. The The full title is The Falcon Cannot Hear, The Second American Civil War, 1937 to 1944, and it starts off with uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt being assassinated before he can become president, and then 
his successors are not able to fix the economy, the De Great Depression gets worse and worse and worse, and then it eventually escalates and spirals into complete civil war. And there are a ton of different factions here. Uh, there's a ton of different ideologies being fought for, a ton of interesting characters, both historical ones and uh, fictional ones, and there's, you know, room to add more. You know, if you want to show it from, like, the perspective of, re of a regular person on the ground, you could do stuff with that. There have been a couple of alternate history shows that have been announced recently and then just kind of fallen through. Like, they had one about uh, the Confederate States winning the American Civil War, and then people got extraordinarily butthurt about that. <laughs> like, like, guys, just because it's showing them winning the war it doesn't mean it's portraying them as the good guys, you fucking idiots. Like, they also had the Man in the High Castle, which had the Nazis winning the war. The Nazis weren't the good guys in that show, guys. <laughs> Relax. Uh, but anyways, yeah, The Falcon Cannot Hear would be really interesting. You know, that's what alternate history does. It makes you think and makes you really consider how the world we live in today got to the point where it is. And I don't know, I, I just think it would be a nice way to force Americans to learn some of our history. And finally, we have the Powder Mage Trilogy. These books are really good. It's about a fantasy world with roughly 18th century level technology, like late 18th century level technology, so they have gunpowder weaponry and stuff, it's just not very advanced. Uh, and then we have mages who use gunpowder as part of their magic, and it works extremely well. It's, it's really interesting. I don't want to go into a lot of detail about that, but uh, anyways, they overthrow their monarchy and set up a republic, and it's similar to the French Revolution, just shows all the chaos that results from that. This series is long enough and complex enough to get turned into a TV show, but it's not so complex and with a million moving parts that it would be a turnoff for general audiences. In fact, I believe they were there were at least rumors that they're planning on making a show of this, but I don't know if anything has actually ever become of that. I hope it does. The point is, it's really good. It's uh, a bit cheaper to produce than a lot of other stuff, too, uh, because, you know, the magic isn't super flashy or crazy for the most part. Uh, so, I don't know, I just think you could, you could do a lot with this story. Don't have a whole lot else to add. And, uh, that's it for this video, so if you have any other suggestions for stuff that could be turned into television shows, not stuff that would be, be, be turned into movies, we'll talk about that some other time, but specifically TV shows, what do you think would work? You know, just let me know down below. That's, that's all. Goodbye. Wow, you, you're still watching? I, I mean, I guess I appreciate it, but I'm not sure why. I mean... At this point, all that we have left is all these names here. These are my patrons, and including my $10 and up patrons. Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodes, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dawn, Dio, Echo, Flax, Karkat Kitsune, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Micaphone, Mistboy, Peep the Toad, Roby Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Tesla Shark, Ve Victus, and Wesley. These are all great people, you know? Let me, let me just, let me tell you. If you want to get your name on here, then consider donating to me once a month. Become a patron. Or if you don't feel like doing that, or you just can't because, you know, you're like poor or whatever. No shame in that. Uh, then just, you know, rate the video, comment on it, subscribe, share it around, spam it to all your friends. And uh, yeah, goodbye.